It used to be a time where R&B music really meant something. A time where you got romance and sweet singing. Now, romantic music never really went anywhere, but it's often overshadowed by music that leaves nothing to the imagination. During the 70s, the Delphonics was all over the charts. And today, I'm going to tell you a story about one of Philadelphia's best soul groups ever. Before we get started in today's video, let's go ahead and leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay up to date. Now without further ado, let's cue that intro. The story begins with two brothers, William Hart and Wilbur Hart. They both would have their own music groups, and when their groups departed, they decided to come together. He had a group called the Veltones, and Randy Kane was in the group. I had a group called the Monterey's. Their group broke up, and my group broke up. So let's do something together. In 1965, William, he was working at a West Philly barbershop where a man named Stan Watson, who worked for Cameo Parkway Records, had stopped by. Now, William, he began singing and playing his guitars to songs that he previously written. Watson, he enjoyed it. No, in fact, he loved what he heard. Watson would put William Hart in touch with Tom Bell, who was a promising producer and arranger for the same label. Stan used to come there to get his hair done a lot, right? So I'm playing my guitar, and he, he turns around and says, oh, this dude can sing. Stan had a record shop, I had a record shop, so, so you could get the pulse of the community. What I found out in my record shop that 95% of my customers were females. Stan Watson was a hustler. He used to sell suits out the trunk of his car. He wanted to become our manager. And it was fine with us because we were trying to get some records out there. He said, I want to introduce you to somebody. So he took me to Cameo Parkway to meet Tom Bell. He said, Bell, um, can you produce records? Are you kidding? Come on, man. You know, you're talking to the number one producer. I know a thing about producing records. That's not the point, though. So William Hart said, man, I write. I said, like, yeah, I write a little bit, too. Let's try to get together, together and write. Following the pairing with Bell, the group, they will record their first record titled, He Don't Really Love You. Now this song was released on Moonshot Records in August of 1966. They will also release another single titled, You Been Untrue. Now, under Bell's direction, the group, they will develop a very distinct sound that can't be replicated. When you hear the Defonics, you are hearing the authentic sound of Philly Soul. Cameo Records would fold by the end of 1967, so Watson, he would establish his own company, Philly Groove Records. Due to the label failing, the group, they would decide to go with Watson. Now with a clean slate, Bell and William, they would compose of the group's first mass single, titled, La La Means I Love You. Now this song is a timeless classic. A fantastic masterpiece. Now I got a question. Did you know? William, he was inspired to write this song by his infant son. Now the story goes, his son couldn't say I love you, so instead he would constantly utter la la la. This is where William had got the idea for the title song in the chorus. My son, he used to always wake up and say, la, 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 la. And he would carry me around and like, yo, I can't believe, yo, can you believe? My, listen to him. He's not saying, he's not saying dad. He's saying la, 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 la. What is he trying to tell me? And I, I, I then I thought, I said, wow. La, la means I love you. The group's debut album titled La, la means I love you was released on May 14th, 1968. And it had peaked at 100 on the Billboard Top 200 charts and number 15 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. This album was produced three successful singles along with the title song. Also, I'm Sorry. And, never mind what they say. Never mind what... and 
break your promise. I had a time for every time I dream. The group popularity continued. That following year, they would release the single, Ready or Not, Can't Hide From Love. Now, Bell, he would produce three more albums for the group with the 1969 album, Sound of Sexy Soul, which peaked at 155 on the Billboard 200 charts and number eight on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. The 1970 self-titled album that peaked at number 61 on the Billboard 200 charts and number four on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. This album also gave us one hit single titled Didn't I Blow Your Mind This Time. And lastly, the 1972 album, Tell Me This A Dream. This album had peaked at 123 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 15 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. Ever since the pairing of the Del Finest and Tom Bell, William and Bell, they came up with all of the group's songs, but mostly written by William Hart. The group, they will soon experience money coming up short with their label. And as soon as Bell got wind of this, he will depart from the label and move on to produce other acts, such as the Stylistics and the Spinners. We got one check for $7,500 a piece for La La Means I Love You. And that's and Stan didn't pass no more after that. Stan's answer to that was, you guys make your money on the road. Don't worry about the sales of the record. We used to ride around in the 16 passenger van, right? Stan Watson had a chauffeur, uh, Rolls Royce. We didn't know what publishing was. We didn't know uh, what points was. We didn't know anything but uh, natural entertainment. It's, it's an old trick, an old trick. Somebody else takes the tune, they publish it, and you don't know, neither one of us knew. Until one day, when Tom Bell confronted Watson head on. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about? Let me tell you real quick. I'm black, not retarded. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to leave this situation right now before you wind up in jail or you wind up in a hospital. And so I quit. I was sorry to leave them, but uh, I couldn't, couldn't be around that character. Randy Kane, he will soon leave the group after the fourth album, and the singer, Major Harris, will swiftly take his place. We're in California, and... Uh... He just had a mental breakdown. He was acting strange. He would be walking off the stage while we were performing. We should have handled it a little different looking back. You know, we should have been more uh, supportive of Randy at that time. We had to have a third man. We were out there working um, on the road with just two of us, you know? Oftentimes when you bring in a replacement, it's not the same thing. But Major locked with those brothers. He, he held his own. He fit like a glove. He even wore the same size shoes Randy wore. He even wore the same size coat. Randy could sing, but Major, it worked out beautiful, you know. Major was a perfect replacement, you know. Everybody loved him. Kane was also the driving force behind the foundation of the band Blue Magic. Now, without Bell, the group's career began to decline. With the exception, of singles such as When You Get Right Down To It, I Don't Wanna Make You Wait, I Told You So, and lastly, Hey Love. The 1974 album was released titled Alive and Kicking. This album peaked at 205 on the Billboard bubbling under the 200 charts and also 34 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. The Hart Brothers, they began to class frequently and their disagreement is what pushed the group apart. Around 1984, the band, they were split to two, with one led by Wilbur Hart and the other led by William Hart. They would have a brief reunion in the 90s when Randy Kane and Major Harris would join them, but then they would split up again. He actually told me, don't write. Let me get everything out of my head first, and then you start writing. You're gonna mess up the Delphonic sound. I wasn't hearing that. My brother's a writer, I'm a writer. He writes great songs, but I wrote the songs that was suitable for the Delphonics. 
It wasn't pleasant being with him because it was always an argument. So I, I felt better, kind of like, you know, we can separate, everything will be good. You use the name, I use the name. Now, the group's music was heavily included into Quentin Tarantino film, Jackie Brown. In 1995, the band, it was inducted into the Philadelphia Music Alliance Walk of Fame. Randy Kane, at the age of 63, was found dead in his home on April 9th, 2009. And in 2006, the group, they would receive the Rhythm and Blues Pioneer Award. Now, Major Harris, he would pass at the age of 65 on November 9th, 2012. And in 2022, the Hart Brothers, they would be celebrating their 55th year in the music industry. Now, William Hart, the band original member, would pass on July 14th, 2022 at the age of 77. Wilbert, his brother, is the only surviving original member. Wilbert and his version of the Delphinus are still performing as of 2022. Now, before William died, the two brothers, they were still at odds. William Hart, he would collaborate with hip hop icon Rick Ross on the song Here For You in 2005. I apologize for the person I the Fugees, they would even sample that song, Ready or Not, in 1996. Ready or not, here I come, you can't hide. Gonna... Delphonics are by far one of the best groups from the Philly Soul era, if not one of the best groups of all time. Every one of their songs was written from personal experience, which explains why they all struck home. <laughs> 